Disclaimer, the following is a parody of Cinema 6 Everything Wrong With series. If you're unfamiliar with their humor, I suggest you will watch their content first. With this in mind, any personal bias towards the show in question will not interfere with the content of the video. This video is not meant to be taken seriously, nor is it meant to offend the creators of the show in question, the show in question itself, or anyone who likes the show in question. Finally, all copyrighted material belongs to its respective owners. Thank you, and please enjoy the video. There, the back door is locked and loaded. Now I can successfully start my- Right here! Right here! Fuck my goddamn ass! That hand is still there. And... You blew on the side that wasn't even in the fire. Good job. Good job not setting that one on fire. You had to congratulate him for that? Hooves. Bone marrow. I'm not the only one that thought that was heading for her eye, right? Also, you can barely see it, but if you squint your eyes just enough here, you can see... Holy sh**. Corn sugar! Cringe material! Have you been watching World Weather News? Um, no? You of all people should know not to talk to people like your strict mother with your mouth full. Also, why did she not call Connie out for that, considering the kind of mom she is, even as just a quick little quip? <laughs> Cue the two seconds of absolutely nothing happening. Awkward. Also, there goes chance number three for you two to kiss. I don't know what it is about this shop, but Pearl just looks... strange. I think it might have to do with that dead look in her eyes. Also, how convenient it is for the gems to come back as soon as Connie needs a ride home. Connie has to go soon. Make that... This instant. Maybe the storm will miss us. Nope, it's definitely going to snow. You mean there's definitely the possibility that it's going to snow, Mrs. No one can see the future. That's the 411, yo. That's the cringe 11, yo. You kids better get yourselves to Greg's. Are you f***ing kidding me, you goddamn supersonic dumbass? You missed a very crucial detail. Why in the hell are the gems pawning Steven and Connie off to Greg to drive them there instead of just taking them themselves? If Garnet can use her goddamn future vision to see that it's quote-unquote definitely going to snow, then surely she'd know how long they have before it starts getting dangerous. Plus, with a combination of the gems' power, such as their wicked jumping skills as demonstrated in Beach Party, and with war pads that could possibly take them closer to their destination pretty f***ing quickly. Surely the gems could get to Connie's household in a fraction of the time Greg's slow-ass van could. As for the fact that the gems sent the shooting star to the galaxy warp while they're all gone, may I remind you how fast time passes to the gems? It is entirely possible that one year on Earth is about one month in the gems time, so surely an extra 5 to 10 minutes would mean nothing to them in the grand scheme of things. This point completely demolishes the plot of the episode, and as such, I grant my own motion of 20 cents added. You're welcome, motherfuckers. I've gotta show you this tube tube video. Tube tube. Connie? No Connie. There's a wall behind Connie in this shot, but in the next shot the van magics its way behind her. Carabina! Carabina! Cringabina! Cringabina! Yes. Oof, did Greg's voice actor just go through puberty again for that split second? I'm a cherry man! No, you're a cringy man. Are you procrastinating? Nah, I'm just killing time. You don't even know what... <sighs> you can practically smell the responsibility. Responsibility has a smell? How do you think wearing a shirt that's way too small for you is a good thing to wear in front of very strict parents? Okay, now you're just being stupid. Really? That is the best outfit I have ever seen. Gotta agree with you on that one, Steven. You would have avoided that if you hadn't turned your wheel. A responsible parent doesn't let two kids strand themselves in a van in the middle of nowhere. A responsible parent also doesn't let said van crash into snow in the middle of nowhere. So I guess we're past that point right now. A responsible parent escorts those kids through wind, sleet, and snow to avoid making the other parents angry! No, a responsible parent calls the other set of parents to ask for assistance in getting the two children home safely. Do you have any idea what time it is? Did you not think to call Connie, Greg, the Gems, anybody for an update on where everyone was? 
Why are the children blue? Blue? What are you- They're normal color, dumbass! Uh, she's sick! She sneezed once. It was a very tiny sneeze, too. That doesn't immediately mean she's sick, otherwise there would be a lot of sick people. I think you know where the door is, since you're standing in it. Real smooth there, dumbass Douglas. In this shot, the back of Greg's outfit looks like this. But in this shot, this part of the outfit is suddenly draped over the hypnotic portal looking thing. My parents are all about safety. Why didn't you say that during the first vision? God damn it, Lennies. Wait a minute, what? Steven was just in the passenger seat here. How come when the scene switches, he jumps to the back of the van? That's one awkward way to transition a scene. Nom, nom, nom. <laughs> Why didn't you call in the first vision? What, are we just expected to believe you suddenly forgot how to work a phone the first time? Jesus Christ! Greg is in the driver's seat in this shot, but in the next shot... It's gone like a... like an angel's kiss. I don't have anything! I could even learn how to lie. Carabina! Carabina! F***ing stop it! F***ing stop it! <laughs> Okay, this whole scene is just out of character for Steven, so I'm just gonna tack on about five cents for Steven's jackassness here. I'm not gonna find those till spring! Dude, it landed in a little pile of snow. Just dig through it, you'll find it no problem. Mom, this is Connie! This scene also proves that both Mahesh Warrens were at the house when this was all going on, which gives even less reason for them to not call and check on Connie if it gets late enough. Ugh, this entire episode is just full of plot holes. No! I could even learn how to learn love. I passed my ability to you for just a moment. And how can you just pass that ability on to someone else through a kiss? Yet another thing in this show that's just flat out never explained. F***ing go away, Lennies. Nice sweatshirt, Greg. You aren't gonna question the holes in Greg's pants, but you'll compliment his ridiculous sweater? What do I even say to this anymore? We Mahesh Warrens are all about safety. Yet you didn't call Connie in the previous... <sighs> just forget it. This episode's plot is already f***ed. Just move on. There may be no words in this scene, but it honestly doesn't need any to be powerful. Subtract five sins. You can practically smell the dicks. Okay, who the fuck are you and why do you look like a wild once reject? Welcome to Downers, Drive-Ins, and Trash! Follow me around the country while I, I eat some fucking shit! I think the only thing you've ever eaten as a young child is glue. Believe me, it shows. I had a classmate that actually legitimately expected everything wrong with say uncle to come out. He ate glue. I'll bet he did. Anyway, would you mind getting the fuck out of my humble abode? Nah. I get this request for you, bruh. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. Why do memes have to be so goddamn annoying? Remind me to nuke them straight to hell and back when my plan succeeds. I'm a, I'm a jerry man. I'm a, I'm a jerry man. I'm a jerry, I'm a jerry, I'm a, I'm a jerry man. man. I'm a jerry, jerry man. I'm a jerry, jerry. Carabina, carabina, be, be, be. Jerry, be, be, jerry, be, be, jerry, be, 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 man. Jerry, be, be, jerry, be, be, man. Be, be, jerry man. Carry, carry, be, be, jerry man. Carry, carry, be, be, jerry man. Carry, jerry.